What's up, Packers Nation? Welcome back to another episode of the Pack a Day Podcast. I'm your host, Andy Herman. You can follow me on Twitter at Andy Herman NFL. You can follow the podcast at Pack a Day Podcast. Today, we're going to be looking at the Packers depth chart. And what I'm not doing today is going over a specific 53 man roster prediction. I think it's, it, listen, I love doing 53 man roster predictions. And if actually, if that's your cup of tea, I would highly recommend checking out today's audio version of the podcast, which Paul Brittle and Mark Eckel give you their most recent post 50 or post mini camp 53 man roster prediction. So definitely check that out. But I do think sometimes we get a little bit caught up in like who's going to be the last two or three people in. And we pay a little less attention to the actual depth chart and like how players are sort of ranked right now and how. How I think they're ultimately going to rank in the season. So I wanted to spend a little bit more time on that today and go over the, what I think the depth chart can potentially be this upcoming season and not focus so much on the 53. And I think things have really changed quite a bit with not only the expanded practice squads, but also with people being able to be called up from the practice squads. And what you're seeing with that initial 53 is it's not even necessarily the 53 that are most going to help you this upcoming week or the best roster that you can possibly assemble. It's the 53 players, partly like the top 40, what, probably eight-ish are your best core players that are, you know, ultimately going to help you win a football game this upcoming week and through the remainder of the season. But those last handful of spots aren't so much of like, you know, who's the best player on the roster and who should we keep right now? It's who's least likely to get claimed off of waivers. And because of that, you're actually keeping players on the roster who might not be quite as good as some of the players that are ultimately on the practice squad, you know, for that week one, but it's because you don't necessarily want to maybe cut a draft pick and therefore you're more likely to cut a undrafted free agent or a player who hasn't been claimed off of waivers in the past so that they can clear waivers. You can get them back on your practice squad and you can call them up through the course of the year when you actually need them. And that's why we've been seeing some weird stuff. I think last year it was, you know, I had predicted that Green Bay would likely only go with two running backs. If I, if I remember correctly, and feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, I think they ultimately went with only two running backs on that initial 53. And I think that was in large part due to the fact that they felt they could get Tyler Goodson and Patrick Taylor and you know their running backs that they wanted back on the practice squad. And they wanted to keep other players, specifically their draft picks, that they did not want to subject to waivers. They didn't want to subject to Caleb Williams or Caleb Jones. I think it'd be nice if they had Caleb Williams, uh, but you know, a Caleb Jones to waivers. And you know, you're ultimately making decisions that are going to make sure that players that aren't going to get claimed by other teams, and you can actually keep your top 69 players that way rather than having to lose one or two of those to other teams. So why I wanted to look at it today in a different point of view is exactly because of that. So let's start with quarterback and just look at the overall depth chart. And this one's mostly clear up top, right? Jordan Love is going to be quarterback number one. And then it becomes interesting at QB number two. And for me right now, Danny Etling is the quote unquote two, and then Sean Clifford is the three. By the time the regular season starts, I fully expect that to be Sean Clifford QB two. In fact, I don't even know that it's necessarily going to take that long. There is nothing that I can point to, and this is not a diss on Danny Etling. I liked him as a quarterback. I actually liked him cutting that, coming out. I thought that he would potentially be a long-term like number three slash maybe number two quarterback in the league. Hasn't worked out that way. But at this point, there's nothing that I can point to with Danny Etling to say, yeah, this is why they need to keep the guy. I just see him more as very similar to Kurt Benkert, who I also really liked, um, but just kind of that journeyman quarterback who's going to get some opportunities, might have a XFL or a USFL stint at some point in their careers. That's where I see Danny Etling. Sean Clifford, I've been impressed with so far. It, nothing like off the charts, but I thought that two minute drill that he had leading his team down the field was super impressive. I've seen some throws from him that I feel like are backup quarterback worthy throws. And I'm really interested to see what he's going to do with training camp in preseason. And I would expect Sean Clifford is going to take that job from Danny Etling, that number two position sooner rather than later. And I think he's going to win that outright by the time training camp is over. So Jordan Love, number one, Sean Clifford, number two. And then the question with Danny Etling is, do they keep him on the practice squad? Do they go in a different direction? I think that's going to be the more interesting battle there. But I believe it's going to be Love one and Clifford two at quarterback. Running back, we know Jones is one. 
We know Dylan is, I'll even say 1B here, right? If, if Jones is 1A, Dylan is 1B, I wouldn't say it's a you know quite a 1-2. Um, and then the question again at number three is, A, do they keep a number three running back? But let me discuss this in a different way. You've got Lou Nichols, you've got Tyler Goodson, you've got Patrick Taylor. Those are going to be the three you know primary threats for that number three running back spot. Look at this more in the idea of what does Green Bay need out of their number three running back. And of course, we know special teams is going to play a major role here, or it's possible that Green Bay goes with only two running backs again and subjects their running backs to waivers and hopes they can get two or three of those guys back on the practice squad. And I think your concern would be, do you really want to lose a Tyler Goodson and you know risk him being claimed if he looks good in preseason? That would be something that could maybe change the Packers' minds if, if one of these guys looks really good in preseason and they start feeling like they're you know one of them is going to get claimed for sure. Goodson would be the one that I would be concerned about losing a little bit more than the others. But think of it this way. What do they need out of that number three running back spot? Because I've talked about this in the past a little bit. With Tyler Goodson, you know what he's really good at? Being a running back. You know what they don't need on game days with that spot? A running back. And that might sound weird because, all right, why are you keeping a third running back if you don't need a running back? What I mean is Tyler Goodson's a really good runner. He's got great cuts. He's got great acceleration. I think he has good vision. And if you needed to give the ball, you know, let's just say Aaron Jones was hurt. Now let's say Aaron Jones is hurt and you've got AJ Dillon and AJ Dillon's going to be your primary ball carrier for that game, but you need that change of pace guy. If it's somebody you can give the ball to eight to 10 times a game and have them bring a little bit speed and burst and acceleration, something different from an AJ Dillon, to me, it's a no brainer. In that situation, you go with Tyler Goodson all day, every day. And I think I'd be kind of excited to see a AJ Dillon, Tyler Goodson, one, two punch. I think it'd be kind of fun. But if Aaron Jones and AJ Dillon are healthy on game day, you don't need somebody to run the ball. In fact, they are probably not going to get on the field on offense, period. So then it becomes, all right, who's the best, you know, special teams player? And then more importantly is like, all right, if you do need one of those players in a pinch, who's the one that can go in and at least pass protect and pick up blitzes should Jordan Love, you know, need to keep that guy in to pass protect on a play? And then it probably becomes a little bit more of your Patrick Taylor, who's also a little bit better of a special teams player. Maybe Lou Nichols can get himself in that conversation. But I think that's all going to come down to what do they need? And that's another situation where very much could look at it as you just keep Dylan and Jones. You have the other three on the practice squad if they all get there. And then you just call up the guy that you need the most on that given Sunday. So if, if all of a sudden Jones or Dylan are a little bit banged up, all right, maybe it's Tyler Goodson time. If not, maybe it's Patrick Taylor time. And there's no guarantee that those guys will be willing to sign back. They could say, like, if you're Patrick Taylor and you get released again, you could be like, you know what? I'm going to go sign with a different team's practice squad at this point. Like, let me try somewhere else because clearly I can't make a 53 here. Same thing with Tyler Goodson. Tyler Goodson be like, man, what more do I need to show you? I'm clearly the number three running back. If you're not keeping me, I'll go sign with some other team's practice squad and hope that they call me up more, make me available for the 53-man roster sooner. So that's what I'd be concerned about if I were Green Bay. And I think at some point you just have to keep the best one, which I think is Tyler Goodson, but Lou Nichols, Patrick Taylor are going to be involved in that conversation. But clearly without saying anything else, Jones is the one, Dylan's the two, and then whoever makes it as the three is the three, or they just call up the guy from the practice squad they need the most. But think of it a little bit different is it's not just the best running back or the best runner that you're keeping at number three. It's what you need on a game day. And sometimes it's just not Tyler Goodson because you already have Jones and Dylan on the roster. Wide receiver, you have a clear one and two in Christian Watson and Romeo Dobbs. I think you have a clear three and four. How they're ordered will remain to be seen, and I think that's really what training camp and preseason is going to determine. But Toure, and, Samari Toure and Jaden Reed, I think are going to be the three and the four, and I think they're both going to receive playing time. So I don't think it is a huge concern. I don't think it's going to be a huge disparity between the two. Then you're going to have your primary two and then Reed and Toure being the like the three and four with them sort of switching roles and you know both of them getting, I don't know, 10, 15 snaps a game somewhere around there. Maybe, maybe they get a little bit more, but that's how I see that. And then number five is totally up for grabs. I would say Dontavian Wicks, probably the leader in the clubhouse. But let's not rule out Malik Keith from anything. Grant Dubose, we haven't even seen play yet. But I think those are the three that are going to fight for five and six. It's going to be Dontavian Wicks, 
Grant DuBose and Malik Heath in some capacity at number five and number six. And then they'd have to earn any additional playing time from there. I th- I'd be shocked if Dontavian Wicks doesn't make the roster. So he'll be either five or six. And then that last spot is going to come down, you would think, to Grant DuBose or Malik Heath. Maybe a Bo Melton can get his name in the conversation as well. Maybe one of the other guys can step up. But right now, I would expect it to be Wicks on the roster in some capacity, fighting for number five or number six. And then DuBose and Heath fighting for that other spot, also fighting for number five or number six. But clear number two, Watson and Dobbs. Clear number three, four. Um, number one and number two, Watson and Dobbs, clear three and four, Toure and Reed, and then five, six up for grabs between Wicks, DuBose, and Keith with Wicks very likely getting one of those spots. All right, tight end. I wouldn't look at this so much as a pure one, two, three, four depth chart. All right. I would look at this as a variety of different roles for these four extremely different tight ends. The closest two tight ends to one another are probably Tucker Craft and Tyler Davis, and they're still a pretty good degree of separation from one another. You've got Luke Musgrave, your fast, athletic, freak tight end, who's basically a big wide receiver right now, uh, but also has, I think, a little bit better blocking ability than sometimes people give him credit for. But how much he can get on the field is going to be determined upon how well of a you know a job he can do as a blocker. The same thing goes for Tucker Craft. If he can block, he's going to see the field a lot. If he can't, it's going to become a lot more challenging. Tyler Davis has been a pretty good blocker, but he needs to add a little bit more, to, you know, from a receiving standpoint. If he wants to receive the, you know, receive more playing time, I should say. And then Josiah Deguara, I think he's going to see a very similar H back, fullback sort of tight end role that we saw him play a season ago, with maybe a sprinkling of more snaps because I do think he has that rapport with Jordan Love a little bit more. But I think these are four very different tight ends, and I think they're going to rotate these four very liberally. So. Musgrave is going to be your one, in my opinion. Kraft is your two. DeGuara is the three. And Tyler Davis is the four if we have to number these. And if I had to rank them based off of snaps this season, I would say Musgrave one, Kraft two, uh, DeGuara three, and then Davis four. But I think on any given Sunday, and I think in any given game, you could see this sort of fluctuate a little bit. And a lot's going to be dependent upon who can be that blocker in this scheme. We know how important Mercedes Lewis was to this team, and we know how important blocking is to Matt LaFleur. Robert Tunyon really stepped up as a blocker, especially last year coming off the injury. So I think losing those two and then figuring out who's going to replace them in some of that blocking capacity, that's really what's going to determine ultimately who gets the vast majority of those snaps. But right now, I wouldn't even look at it as one through four. Just know all four of these guys are going to get playing time. And the more they can do for the offense, the more playing time that they're probably going to get. But Musgrave, Kraft, Deguara, Davis, if I had to label them one through four at this point. All right, offensive line's a little bit different, a little bit more unique, but left tackle is going to be Bakhtiari. I think Zach Tom is the primary backup. So even if he starts at right tackle, if something happens to Bakhtiari, I expect Zach Tom to go to left tackle, and then Yash to take over at right tackle. So Bakhtiari at left tackle, then Zach Tom. And I think Caleb Jones ends up being the, the third left tackle. I think he's going to get a majority of his snaps on the left side. I think we've already seen that a little bit. We've seen him get you know the nod when both Bakhtiari and Jenkins have been out, and Zach Tom has been used elsewhere. So I'm going to say Caleb Jones, number three at offensive tackle, at least on the left side. Left guard, I think, is Elton Jenkins. Same thing here. I think Zach Tom is the backup with Yash then going to right tackle if Zach ends up being the starter. And then I'll say Royce Newman as the number three left guard. Josh Myers, Zach Tom again as the backup center. And then I'll say Jay Hansen right now, although I think only one of Royce Newman and Jay Hansen makes the roster. There's a chance neither of them do, but probably just one. But right now I'll say Myers, Tom, and Hansen. Right guard, John Runyon Jr., Zach Tom again, and then Royce Newman at, at the number three there. And then right tackle, I expect Zach Tom to win that spot. Yash backing him up as the primary backup at right tackle. And then Luke Tenuta being the number three at right tackle is what I'm assuming right now. So Rashid Walker certainly could get his name in the conversation. We'll see if any of the undrafted guys can. It's going to be very interesting sorting out some of those last offensive line spots. There's a lot of talent there. But right now I'll say Bakhtiari, Tom, Caleb Jones at left tackle, Jenkins, Tom, Newman at left guard, Myers, Tom, Hanson at center. John Running Jr., Tom, and Newman at right guard, and then Tom Nyman and Tenuta at right tackle. Defensive line, you've got your clear five or four, in my opinion. Kenny Clark, 
T- is your one, TJ Slayton as your two, Devontae Wyatt as the three, Colby Wooden as the four. And yes, I do think Slayton is going to be a slight hair ahead of Devontae Wyatt. It doesn't matter. They're both going to play about the same amount of snaps. They're both going to play a lot. So don't read too much into it, but I think Clark, Slayton, Wyatt, and Wooden, one through four. And then number five probably comes down to Carl Brooks versus Jonathan Ford. I think that's going to be Carl Brooks as the five. And then Jonathan Ford has to figure out, you know, if does, does he make the roster? And if so, how does he get in that rotation? In all likelihood, even if he made it as the sixth defensive lineman, he's probably a rotation or um, a game day inactive, even in that situation. And I think they're going to go with more players who can play special teams at edge, linebacker, corner, safety, et cetera. But if he has a really good camp, really good preseason, and they think he could get claimed, then Ford could get his name more in the conversation at that number five or number six spot. Edge, we're going to assume everyone's healthy here. Rashawn Gary's your one. Preston Smith is your two. Lucas Van Ness is your three. JJ Kingsley and Nigbari is your four. I think Justin Hollins is your five. And then Brenton Cox is your six. I think everyone else is going to have to fight and claw desperately just to get any sort of traction and you know potential roster ability with that 53. But I think, Gary, you're clear in a way, number one, how he comes back from injury and how many snaps he gets will alter that at some point. But assuming everyone was 100% healthy, Gary one, Smith two, LVN, Enigbari, Hollins, and then Brenton Cox. Inside linebacker, I think pretty easy here. Devondre Campbell, number one, although Quay Walker did get the primary dime snaps and Campbell went to the bench in mini camps. So that's one to sort of keep an eye on. So maybe Quay ends up being one and Devondre two, but right now I'm going to still say Campbell's your one, Quay is your two. I do think McDuffie comes in as the clear number three. And then a little bit more interesting, but I'll say right now, Eric Wilson is the four and Tariq Carpenter is the five. I think all five of them make it with McDuffie, Wilson, and Carpenter all being core special teamers, but that's how I would order them right now. Campbell, Quay, McDuffie, Wilson, and Carpenter. At corner, Jair's your one, Razul is your two on the outside, Keyshawn's your three, but you're number one in the slot. I think Eric Stokes is the four. That's where I would put him right now. I wouldn't mess with it too much if, if Alexander Douglas and Nixon play well together and all three of them fit the role really well. I don't want to move Douglas from the outside anywhere else. I don't want to move Jair. I like Keyshawn in the slot. I certainly don't want to see Eric Stokes in the slot. So I think it's Alexander Douglas and Keyshawn one through three, but I do think they have a role in some way for Eric Stokes that's more than just a dime corner. Maybe he takes a handful of snaps from Razul Douglas here or there. Maybe they play Jair in the slot some and get Eric some snaps on the outside with Razul on the opposite side. I think there's some ways to work him in, but he might just end up being the dime corner to begin with as he recovers from injury. So right now I'll say Alexander Douglas, Nixon, and Stokes one through four. I'm going to say Carrington Valentine ends up with the five. Corey Valentine ends up with the six. Right now, I'd say Keandre Thomas is your seven, SJC is your eight, and then don't forget about Ennis Gaines being able to pinch down there as well uh, as a slot corner. So he'll get his name in the conversation, but I'll say Alexander Douglas, Nixon, Stokes, and then Valentine and Ballantyne are your five and six. Valentine due to upside and just corner play, and then Ballantyne more based on his special teams prowess. At safety, I mean, good luck. Have at it. Pick names out of a hat at this point. Your your guess is as good as mine, but I'll say Darnell Savage is the one. Rudy Ford is the two. Tavarius Moore is the three. I think Moore and Ford could end up swapping. I think all these guys might, if, if none of them play well, they're going to give all these guys a chance to see who can ultimately fill that spot. I'll say Jonathan Owens is the four, Innis Gaines is the five, Anthony Johnson Jr. is the six, Dallin Levitt is the seven. They're not going to keep seven, my guess is one of those veterans ends up getting cut. I would lean towards Jonathan Owens based on guaranteed money at this time, but if he plays well, he'll make the team. Ennis Gaines could end up on the chopping block as well, depending on what he does. Dallin Levitt could, but I think he's just a core special teamer. But right now I'll say Savage, Ford, Moore, Owens, Gaines, Anthony Johnson Jr., and Dallin Levitt, at least as pure safeties at, as of this very moment. Special teams, not much to talk about. Carlson's the kicker, O'Donnell's the punter, Orzek's the long snapper right now. Whelan and Hatcher at punter and long snapper specifically will have to battle it out to see if they can take that job from either O'Donnell or Orzek. The positions I'm really looking forward to keeping an eye on, I would start with wide receiver and corner. At you know that number three and four wide receiver, how does that shake out? And then five and six, how does that shake out? And then corner, what happens with Eric Stokes when he comes back? But then out of Carrington Valentine and Corey Valentine and Ennis Gaines and Keandre Thomas, SJC, et cetera. How does that sort of number five and number six spots shake out? And then who just ultimately wins the safety spots? I think that will be worth keeping an eye on as well. That's going to do it for me today. Hope you enjoyed this episode. 
I'll be right back here tomorrow. So make sure not to miss that. Make sure to subscribe if you have not already. But until next time, and as always, go Pack Go.